Welcome back to Dry Hall Homestead. This is Danielle and I'm coming to you with another video in my Clabber series. <laughs> um, today we're, I'm going to show you how to make a soda cheese. So I have a video and I will link it up in the cards below about how to make a Clabber. I will tell you real quick uh, this clabber, I, it's used with raw milk, warm raw milk. We um, brought it in from the cow, strained it off, added a big dollop of cultured buttermilk from the fridge, stirred it and let it sit at the counter. This has been for three days. So on this third day, I would need to either make something with it because it is at the consistency I like. I don't really want it to get any more sour. So I either need to do something with it or stick it in the fridge. So I'm going to show you how to make soda cheese. So this is a very cultural thing, I'm pretty sure, because it is a Mennonite. Only my Mennonite friends know this. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's just a tr something handed down traditionally through the Mennonites. Um, we have it in a, there is a cookbook, actually I have it right here, the Mennonite Country Style Recipes and Kitchen Secrets by uh, Esther H. Shank has this recipe in it, but um, it's a very vague <laughs> explanation. And also um, she uses margarine, which is like outlawed in my home. So I never touch margarine or vegetable oil, canola oil, any of that doesn't come in our, our kitchen. So I'm going to bring you the Dry Hello Homestead version of soda cheese. So first we are going to take our clabbered milk that's what we're, it's, some people call it sour milk. We're going to call it clabber. It's the same thing, but um, it smells good. So we're not going to call it sour milk because it's not really sour. We are going to actually take this clabbered milk and we are going to heat it in a pot. I'm going to use my Dutch oven. You can use whatever pot you want. I don't know why. I always tell you just what I'm using because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, can I make that? Because I don't know if I have the same thing the person I'm watching has. But I'm using my Dutch oven. You can use a stainless steel pot. I just need to make sure it fits a gallon of milk. We're going to heat it to 115 degree. D degrees. Degrees? Degrees. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and dump my clabber. And I want you to see how thick it is. So the, that's the cream. I actually try to scrape most of the cream off um, as it has thickened and I use that as sour cream. Ugh. I'm going to try actually making butter with that. That would be a cultured butter milk or butter and I think that would have great flavor but I haven't done that yet so I'm not really sure if that's going to turn out. So that is how thick. It makes some lovely beautiful sounds <laughs> as you're putting it in the pot but that's fine you do need a thermometer um i have my big cheese uh making thermometer i'll link in the description book below I'm going to heat it up so because this is just room temperature i did not stick this in the fridge first it shouldn't take long to heat up so yeah we're at 75 degrees um to start with now as this is heating up i'm just going to go through and cut my curds like this every now and then and um, it's slowly going to cook them as it gets up to 115. So we are very close to 115 so I'm going to go ahead and give it another cut a couple times. Yep, we are at 115. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat. Now our next a step in this soda cheese is to actually strain off our curds. So let me show you what I have going on. So I am boiling some water to sanitize my cheesecloth. I have my cheesecloth over top of a colander and then I have a bowl underneath because I'm actually going to hang my sack of cheesecloths, <laughs> my sack of cheese curds on a little hook um, here in my kitchen and I'm going to let it drain out into my uh, container, my pot there. So I have poured my curds into our bag. It's not a bag, it's a cheesecloth and I hung it up on my little nail or hook. I have a hook right there. I have my bowl underneath collecting anyway and we're going to let this drain out for several hours and I will bring you back 
when we move on to the next step. Okay, these curds have drained, have been hanging and drained for now overnight. We're going to add them to a bowl. And we're gonna rinse this in the sink before we put it in the washing machine for sure. And we are going to add baking soda. I'm gonna break it up a little bit before I do that. So I just kind of go like this, break these curds up. I have hung both um, overnight and just for five to six, seven hours during the day. I haven't really seen any difference. So just depends on what time of the day I get it started usually. So I'm just gonna do about a teaspoon and mix that in. And then we're gonna let this set with the baking soda. So this is just baking soda, about a teaspoon of dip baking soda and our curds that have been hanging and draining. So we're gonna let these set together for about, about four to five hours on the counter, don't put them in the fridge or anything. And then we'll move on to the next step. I am gonna put a lid on this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on this before I let it set. counter four to five hours and then we will come back. I'm going to add some butter to our pot. Obviously some homemade butter. We're going to melt this butter and then we're going to add our cheese curds that have been setting with the baking soda and we're going to melt those cheese curds. Okay I added a little more butter. Uh, the recipe I'm going by says three tablespoons of margarine, and we don't use margarine in this home. So, <laughs> we're doing about three tablespoons of butter. It's pretty much melted. I'm going to add my curds that have the baking soda on them. Add them to the pot, and we're going to stir until they are melted. And I have this on just a little bit below medium heat. So my house got really loud, <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just record what we're doing here. We're gonna keep stirring until those curds melt. You can actually see that they're beginning to. Um, do stay with this because I have ruined a batch because I let it get, um, I forgot to stir and let it burn at the bottom. <laughs> so stay on top of it. So we're just stirring all of these curds with the butter until they melt. Once we get to melting, we're going to need one cup of rich milk, which I would say would be like a, a whole milk. That's what I'm putting in here. And um, from a cow like a Jersey, it's probably even a little more rich than a, a whole milk. But we put one cup in there and then stir until smooth. You can see it's very smooth here. And then we're gonna add salt and I usually do about a tablespoon, or not a tablespoon, a teaspoon. <clears throat> I just use my my spoon <laughs> that is a teaspoon spoon, I guess it's supposed to be. And I just add one teaspoon of that pink Himalayan sea salt and stir that in. And then go ahead and whisk one egg and we're going to mix that in. Be very careful, you can temper your egg if you'd like, adding a little bit of the mixture in um, to the egg and then start stirring it and then adding it to your large pot. But I, this is where it has worked fine for me. Just stir vigorously <laughs> as you add it in. And then all of these ingredients, that is it. Um, the directions um, in my book also tell you to add yellow, um, yellow food dye, but we are not going to do that. And when you have fresh eggs like we do, there's already quite a bit of color between the butter and the raw eggs. 
It, they look beautiful. It, this looks yellow anyway. But if you want, I mean, that is an option. We're just going to keep stirring it until, at this point, it boils. As soon as it boils, turn off your heat and it is finished. So, yes, yeah, stay with this until it is done and you can see that it's boiled. You continue to scrape the bottom down, even in my Dutch oven. When I burn it before, it was in my Dutch oven. So, be careful. And I love to use this just for cheese and crackers. Or my number one way I use this is in mac and cheese. Uh, it has like a Velveeta texture to it, consistency to it. So I will add this to pasta once it is done. Straight in the pot, I add a little extra salt and pepper when I do mac and cheese with this soda cheese. But I prefer to use that rather than use some of my aged cheeses like an Asiago or a cheddar or something like that. Those are a little more precious to me and I like to have those raw. Those cheeses stay raw as long as possible, especially when they've been aging for months. I really don't want to just stick them in a mac and cheese. So this is my number one cheese to add to macaroni and cheese. And my family loves it and it's quite good. So we are going to stir until it is boiling, which I will show you right here. It is boiling. Go ahead and take it off. And it's starting to thicken up. As it cools, it thickens up to where you can um, kind of spoon it out. It never gets hard like a hard cheese. This is going to be not runny, but it's going to be exactly like Velveeta. When it's in the fridge, you can kind of cut a little slice off. And then as it warms up, it will be more creamy. So that is it. Thanks for watching.